Hey everybody and welcome to this video with myself, Sarah Lean. What I want to do in this video is show you how I've created a PowerShell script that interacts with the Octopus API to then trigger a runbook inside my Octopus deploy environment. And then I try to make it even more simple for myself to trigger that runbook and I have my Elgato Stream Deck configured so that I can press a button and the PowerShell script runs for me. So there's a lot to this. So let's dive into the first part, which is this, the PowerShell script. Now, the PowerShell script is quite a few lines long worth of code, but what we can actually do is break it into four key sections. So let's dive into what those four key sections or steps are within the script. Now, the first part of the script is around gathering information. It's about gathering information about your Octopus deploy environment so that the script knows where to interact with and what parts of your Octopus deploy environment you want to interact with. The second stage is creating a runbook snapshot. And what we're doing here is capturing what that runbook looks like and um, creating a moment in time so that we can then interact with that runbook. We're then going to publish that snapshot and basically make it production ready because when we look at runbook snapshots, we have two forms that they can be in, either draft or published. Now, the draft is, as you expect, a work in progress, somewhere that you can continue to work on it and it's not quite production ready. Whereas with a published snapshot, that is production ready, that's ready, that's been tested, that is battle hardened um, and can be used to actually, like I say, interact with your production environment and everybody in your organisation is absolutely ready to use it. Now the fourth step is actually triggering that run book. So we're taking the information that we've gathered, we're taking um, the access to the published snapshot of my run book and then triggering that run book to run for either one environment or two environments, however many we've actually built into the script. So that's the four key stages of my PowerShell script. Let's now dive into the code and we'll start to break down some of that code and look at what that actually looks like. So we talked about the four main stages of this script. Now let's have a look at the code and I'll walk you through some of this. Now, obviously there's a lot of code here. So if you wanted to grab a copy of this, I will leave a link in the description. So be sure to have a look there and you can grab the code there for yourself. So first of all, what we're doing is we're defining some variables for our script that we'll need. So we have things like our Octopus URL, our API key. We also have the space name, the project name, the runbook name, and the environments that we want to interact with and trigger this runbook for. Then we move on to actually gathering some information about our Octopus environment. So we're gathering information about um, the space, the project, the runbook and the environments. And again, it's pulling that information from what we've specified in the variables. So it'll connect to our Octopus space that we specified in terms of our Octopus URL. It will then interact with the space, the project, the runbooks and pull all of that information so that it has it when it needs to later on um, pull that information and interact with the Octopus environment to trigger this runbook. So now our script has gathered some information and interrogated our Octopus environment, we want to start to interact with it and get this to the point where we can actually run the runbook. Now the first stage we do is actually create a runbook snapshot. Now runbooks and deployments define their processes in exactly the same way, but where a deployment has a release, a runbook has what is called a snapshot. The next section of this code is actually looking at if our runbook needs any packages. So if there's any packages that it needs to download and get a copy of the latest version of, then that's what this section does here. Um, you shouldn't need to worry about this too much. It's just a part of the process that needs to happen inside this script. Now, the next part of this code here um, we have on line 65 is actually publishing our snapshot. Now, the concept of a published snapshot is designed to help avoid confusion when selecting a version of the run book that you're supposed to run or potentially not run. So in this way, we're trying to get this production ready. So publishing a snapshot means that that snapshot is production ready ultimately and is approved for general use. 
And then last but not least, this section of the script here, starting on line 71, actually starts to run the run book. So it looks at our environment variable that we defined earlier on. In this case, we have to define two. So we've said test and production. So this would loop around each um, environment and kick off that run book. So it would run the run book in the test environment and then it would run it for the production environment as well. If you only had one, it would only do it for the one environment. And likewise, if you had more environments specified, it would run that multiple times as well. And that's ultimately the script that would trigger our run book for us. Now we could run this from our machine. We could select all and um, run um, F8 within Visual Studio Code to run it and it would run absolutely fine. That would be quicker potentially than um, going into the Octopus and Deploy environment. But what we actually want to do is use our Elgato Stream Deck to be able to run this um, PowerShell script, run this run book um, just by the press of a button on an Elgato Stream Deck. So let's flip over to our Elgato software and have a look at how we can set up a button on our Stream Deck to run this PowerShell script for us. So here I am inside the Elgato Stream Deck software that we can use to actually configure the different buttons on our Stream Deck to do actions for us. Now, I want to create something that will trigger that PowerShell. So what I have to do is go into System and then Open and I'll drag that over here. And this now allows me to actually execute that PowerShell script. So we'll put in a title. We'll say Trigger Run Book. So inside the trigger um, section here, or the app or file path, we want to type in pwsh.exe space dash execution policy space bypass space dash file space and then the file path of that PowerShell script. Now, what that does is call our PowerShell script module. It then um, sets the execution policy to bypass so that there are no warnings and nothing is blocked. And because we created this script, we're happy for that to happen. Obviously, please be advised to use the right execution policy if you don't trust the script. But as I created it, I trust this script. So I'm happy to set the execution policy as bypass. I then specify the file that I want to be run inside that PowerShell module. Um, so again, I've just put in the file path um, for where my PowerShell script is saved. And that's all I need to do. I could customize the logo, obviously, um, but now on my actual physical stream deck, I have a button that says trigger run book. And when I press it, it will call that PowerShell script and trigger it to run, which will ultimately mean my Octopus Deploy run book will run.